All right, so my plan originally was to do an unboxing video of this Marlin 1894 in 44 mag. Unfortunately, I had to do quite a bit of work to it out of the box. So to call it a unboxing would be a straight fabricated lie. So this is not going to be an unboxing video, but it is brand new. It's going to be more of an overview and some things I want to talk about. When I went and picked this up from sportsman's warehouse the guy pulled it out of the box and showed it to me and uh, he showed me right here there was a, a line like it looked like um, well when he pulled it out of the bag it had a uh, rubber band stuck to it and when he pulled the rubber band off like a piece of rubber band there was a line on the receiver and it had like goo on it and he started to scrape it off with his fingernail and it was coming off and he showed it to me and he's like, I've never seen that before. He's like, is, uh, is that okay or do you want another one? And I had to order this off their website. They didn't have any in stock. So if I decided I wanted a different one, I would have had to wait another week or so. So I was like, no. I was like, that's no big deal. I can clean that off. It, you know, whatever. I'm not sure exactly what happened. I've never seen that either. But I'll roll in a picture of what it looked like before I cleaned it off. So he handed me the gun. And I looked it over, I thought I looked it over carefully, but apparently I did not. So, I, uh, I messed with the lever. The lever seemed pretty smooth, and it, it, it is a really nice, really nice um, rifle. So, we did the paperwork on it, I got it home, and pulled it out of the box. And for whatever reason, when I pulled it out of the box, the stock was loose. I mean, it had like... A good bit of play and I'm like oh man I mean you could you could literally wiggle it back and forth and it would it would move right here and I'm like son of a gun so I push it forward and I tighten that screw up and it was fine the screw just needed tightened and it needed to tighten a good bit so I was like all right well I wonder if any of these action screws need tightened well they did all of them this screw was loose this screw was loose, that screw was loose, and that screw was not loose, but I'll get to that screw in a minute. So, now they weren't like negligently loose, like nothing bad would have happened. You could have shot the gun, it wasn't a problem. But they needed like a quarter turn to be tight. So, it wasn't a big deal. I got those tightened. I got a smaller screwdriver to check this one, this screw here, and I still wound up scratching the receiver you can see the little dent there um, I put some cold blue on it it's actually very hard to see now I'm very happy with the cold blue process I did um, you can see in certain if you do certain light you can see there's a little dent there but I did put cold blue on it so it looks all right and then when I was cold bluing that I was looking see if I can get it to see if I can get it to show here I don't think I can it's only in certain lighting can there you can kind of see it down here look down here it looks like there's a bunch of swirl marks swirl marks on the in the bluing it's very hard to see but it's there i noticed it while i was cold bluing it it is there Let's see there see it down just below the loading gate to the left I see it but Still, I don't know if they tried to polish bluing there or what happened, but still a little disappointing. Uh, okay, so other than those little issues, <clears throat> the screws being tight basically, and that little line that was on the receiver and the little scratch marks that are there, this gun is really nice. Uh, <clears throat> and it's not, don't, don't get me wrong, I don't want this to be like I'm bashing Marlin or anything. Because I'm not. I'm super happy with this gun. And uh, quite frankly, I'd like to get one of their 4570s. I'm really, really glad that Ruger bought Marlin and started producing their, their firearms again. Actually, I think I'm going to send them an email and just let them know, like, here's my serial number. Uh, this stock, the screws were loose. So just, you know, you may want to check your QC on that. But not a big deal. Other than that, everything seemed good. Uh, I just have... I really don't have good luck at all when it comes to uh, buying new guns. Like, literally, every gun I get has issues. 
So the, the leather is smooth. I had a Marlin uh, 336 back in 2009, like a year after, a year or two after Remington had bought them, and you couldn't work the lever. I had to pull the gun down and use my whole hand here and use the lever. Now, I was young at that t in 2009, too. I mean, I wasn't real young. I was like 16. Uh, so I couldn't work the lever, and I don't think... I don't even think my, my, my dad could. It was just that stiff. It needed to be sent out to somebody. Uh, and I ended up getting rid of it because when you would try to chamber around, more often than not, it would actually jam up. And it just wasn't good. And so I had gotten rid of it. And a lever gun was always on my list of guns to get. But I wanted a pistol caliber lever gun. And I always wanted a wheel gun to go with it. I forgot I meant to have the Colt Pyth or Colt Anaconda out the whole time. So, but now I have a nice uh, revolver, 44 Magnum, and a nice lever gun in 44 Magnum. And I actually probably the next video you see will will be another uh, revolver that I got. So I actually have another revolver as well that I just bought. But, anyways, back to the Marlin. Uh, they, this thing was kind of expensive. I mean, this was eleven hundred bucks. Probably, I think it was twelve hundred with uh, tax and all that. <clears throat> so, not the cheapest gun out there. Not the most expensive. As long as it shoots good and cycles fine, I'll be happy with it. It's a little bummed about the screws, but again, it's not the end of the world. Uh, but this just goes to show you that uh, everybody puts bad guns out every now and then so not a big deal I think I'm gonna make a video and talk about all the bad guns that I've gotten literally all the guns that I've gotten with issues and uh, not to uh, throw the manufacturing under the bus or anything but to point out like everybody does it literally everybody does it in fact I got a friend at what I work with and he's like because I'll, I'll tell him like, again I bought a gun I was like man this was wrong with it he'll be like hmm it's almost like you shouldn't have bought a new gun you know, because he, he says I buy too many guns, which I, I do. So, But anyways, this looks great. I'm excited to get this out. I, I freaking haven't even gotten a revolver out yet. I have been waiting for two weeks on ammunition. It should be here tomorrow. So hopefully Monday I'll get out and be able to shoot both of these. I'm really excited. Since, oh, one more thing I want to show you I thought was cool was if you look here, has model 1894 Remington, but it has the, um, I think that's a, what is that? Hold on, let me look off camera. I think, I guess it's just an R. But anyways, it's a, uh, kind of a throwback there to the JM stamp barrels for the Marlins, but this is an R stamp barrel now for uh, Ruger, because Ruger owns Marlin, so I thought that was really cool, that was a pretty classy touch there, I like that a lot, so, and I kind of would like to get rid of this safety, I kind of want to delete this safety and put a saddle ring there, don't know if I'll do that, but it does, I think that would be cool, so, anyways, thanks for watching, have a good day, let me know what you think of the new Marlins, that are made by Ruger, and if you plan on getting one or not. My only complaint with the new Marlins is they're just expensive. Even the 336s, you should be able to get those at Walmart for 300 bucks. And it looks like they're just being released now, where they're getting ready to be released, and they're a $1,000. And I'm like, oh my lord, that's a lot of money for a Marlin. So, anyways, thanks for watching. Have a good day.